So one of the things that was shocking to me is when I finally got my first microscope, I started taking samples out of people's gums and, and looking to see why their teeth were getting loose. And uh, it's really simple. You know, the, they're infected. They're infected with a wide variety of organisms. This is called a spirochete. looks like a little curly hair snake. We find those in the blood as well as in the gums. Uh, they're associated with stroke, heart attack, uh, low birth weight babies. This is an amoeba. We find parasites in about 80% of the severe periodontal cases. Um, they, uh, they eat white blood cells. They, they create uh, havoc, inflammation. Same reason you get diarrhea when you get amoebae dysentery. You get pus coming out of your gums or just white blood cells if you're using the microscope. Here's one eating a white blood cell. You can see him wrapping himself around it and he's dragging another, the nucleus of a white blood cell behind him. He, saving it for a snack at some later point. And the, the research is, is now irrefutable. I mean, it's in, it's in all the scientific journals. It's really clear that gum disease is an infection of the mouth. It is, and then now that we've got DNA testing, we can actually tell you who you got it from. <laughs> and the answer is mothers, lovers, and dogs. But uh, don't let it lick you in the face, you know. And so the... There are very few unanswered questions regarding gum disease, and the one that it is amazing to everyone, and myself included, is that when you get rid of these organisms, health results. You don't have to do anything. You just got to get rid of this. Gums are the same way. You got to get rid of the infection. And you're not going to do it with a uh, piece of string. Um, you know, the, the dentist and the dental hygienist have been flogging people with a piece of string for about the last, you know, 20 years. And does that solve the problem? Well, not unless you put a hook on the end of the string and you can catch this guy, you know. But it's, they live there. They're swimmers. They're, they're enjoying you, and then you're their, their, their nutrient. But you can kill them with lots of stuff. You know, the, they can't stand oxygen. They can't stand uh, you know, salt water. They can't stand uh, Epsom salt. You know, the Max Gerson wouldn't like us to use uh, sodium chloride. Well, I don't care. Salt is any metal hooked to an inorganic substance. So these guys don't have any skin. So you can kill them with potassium chloride. You can kill them with uh, Epsom salt. You can kill them with any number of things. Iodine is a particularly effective way to get rid of them. But since you've got, at least when you started out, you had 32 teeth. Well, actually, you started out, you had 20. And now you, they all fell out, and you got 32 more. You got to do it around all 32 teeth. You know, you can't clean one finger and expect the rest of your hand to be clean. You got to clean the whole thing, and that probably takes a professional. I have, I wrote a book about this about 20 years ago. Some people were able to accomplish it, but I'd say about 90% of the people needed some a further intervention by a trained hygienist or a dentist who would look under the microscope and see if there were critters. The exception to that is this fellow here. This is a one-celled animal amoeba. The first guy is down on the bottom left-hand side. It's, it's a trichomonad. Uh, we saw one in the blood yesterday, um, day before yesterday. Uh, these are, th these got five little fingers that stick out in the front and they go thrashing around. You don't want trichomonads running around through your system either. And this is, these are spirochetes glommed onto white blood cells. So the, the bacteria actually can attack your immune system if it tries to get rid of them, and it will, then the, the white blood cells uh, get attacked. So that's, that's the moral of the story. So you have, to, you, you have to use either herbs or chemicals to kill these guys. This is a, a show that uh, I, I give uh, called Biocompatible Perio and that the object of it is, is to kill off all these critters in such a fashion you don't kill off the person. And so uh, one of the dentist's favorite things to kill these guys with is, is fluoride. And in my book, I detailed the death of a child in the dental chair because he went in and had his teeth painted and he died. Uh, didn't, took, didn't die right away. It took him almost five hours. But they didn't pump his stomach as they should have. And why did he die? The, the coroner determined that he had received a dose of fluoride sufficient to kill three children his size. And the dentist and the hygienist both testified under oath in court at their malpractice trial for the murder of this child that they didn't know fluoride was a poison. Apparently, they didn't own a Webster's Dictionary. But gum disease is now linked to a whole host of things, and they're suggested that heart attack, increased risk of a, a low-term, uh, low-weight preterm uh, baby, which means, you know, basically they're not going to prosper. Um, people with diabetes, uh, even, even pancreatic cancer, uh, they get in the pancreas and wreak havoc with your uh, entire system and your immune system as well, because your immune system is totally distracted with these things. It's constantly fighting to keep you alive, and so the best thing you can do for that is to 
take over that job for it and disinfect your mouth. Whoa, that's so such a controversy. We're going to get into root canals in a little bit. Uh, a root canal is a dead tooth. There's a nerve in the center of the tooth. The tooth is porous. And that when the nerve dies, uh, it uh, tooth generally forms an abscess. And that uh, there is, it's like a tree in a forest. There is no way to sterilize a dead tooth. Can you sterilize a dead tree? Well, you can't sterilize teeth either. So if you keep a dead tooth, you're keeping a dead tooth. Face it, don't call it a endodontically treated tooth. Call it a dead tooth that we've managed to make the infection go from uh, an acute system to a chronic system. Well, is that real good for the immune system? No. Are they toxic? Yes. Can we measure that? Yes. Has it been done in every major research program that's ever looked at this? Are they full of bacteria? Yes. Um, on a brand new, perfectly healthy wisdom tooth, I do not know why they were going to rip out these kids' wisdom teeth. But what they did is they drilled a hole in uh, one of them, didn't kill the tooth, just drilled a hole in it. And on the other side, they drilled a hole in and did a root canal. And then, you know, six weeks later, they extracted the teeth. And then they analyzed that the tooth, that, a live tooth that had a hole drilled in it, had about four bacteria per square millimeter, which if you put your two fingers together and push real hard, that's about a square millimeter. And the tooth that was killed and done, uh, had a, received a root canal by specialists in a dental school in a scientific situation had 4,000 bacteria per square millimeter. So it's not like they're not full of bacteria. So anyway, uh, dentistry's gone through a long and rather checkered history of, uh, of disinformation w with the public. And, that it, and it has to do with the fact that the profession works on anecdote and tradition rather than peer-reviewed scientific evidence. And, it, and it's, a, it, it's a sad thing, but there are some pivotal people in the history of dentistry, and I just want to give you the names that you probably never hear them again. W.D. Miller determined that tooth decay and gum disease were infectious, and that was in the 1800s. C.C. Yeah. Bass who is, was the youngest man to ever be the dean of a medical school. Uh, Dr. Bass uh, went to see his dentist when he was about 60, and uh, the dentist looked at his gums, and he said, well, you've got gum disease, Dr. Bass. And CC said, uh, well, you know, what causes gum disease? And the, and the dentist says, we don't know. And so Dr. Bass was not terribly impressed with the knowledge of this individual, so he went, went back to his laboratory, and he dusted off his microscope, and he took a little sample from his gums and put it on the microscope, and he saw the same things I just showed you, amoebas and spirochetes. And he said, well, that's not good to have around your teeth. And it was Dr. Bass that figured out how to get rid of amoebas and spirochetes in the 1920s before antibiotics by meticulously cleaning his mouth and, and using antiseptics and a piece of string. And then, so Dr. Kai has discovered what causes gum disease. Uh, he he re repeated Dr. Bass's earlier work, which was Dr. Bass was observational. Paul's was more interventional. He basically took patients and treated them for these infections and showed that it went away. And then uh, Robert Barkley uh, uh, died way too early, but he was the, the guy I learned all this from because he took his little airplane, flew around the United States, and talked to all the dentists and says, dentists are crazy. You know, they, they want to treat the disease. They don't want to stop it. And they're afraid that you will find out how to stop dental disease, and that will cut into their income. And that's a fear that, that reaches right down to their very heart because they've spent all this money to go to school, and they are afraid you'll find out. So they've got a fake dental health program, a fake dental health program using a hazardous waste from the nuclear and phosphate fertilizer industry, putting it in your water, telling you, oh, well, these children have a lot of tooth decay. Let's go ahead and put some hazardous waste in the water. That'll solve the problem. Doesn't solve it a bit. So they do phony studies. When you, when you put a filter on fluoridation and say, show me a broad-based blinded study of animals or humans that's ever found a significant reduction in tooth decay from the addition of one part per million hydrofluorosilicic acid to the public water supply, and they go like, what do you want that for? Well, that would be kind of where I'd start, really. <laughs> so, anyway, they don't have it, so they, they uh, basically buy politicians. Uh, there's the man. He, he didn't want to put up with gum disease, and he didn't want to lose his teeth. He lived to be 93, and he never lost a tooth. He stopped the disease. He kept using his microscope until he figured out all the bugs were gone. But the big problem that Dr. Bass had was the pro dental profession. He talked endlessly. He's an MD. But he talked endlessly to the dental profession, trying to get them to act responsibly, to tell their patients, to teach their patients how to make their mouth well. And the dentist said, well, there's no money in that.